Hi everyone, and welcome to episode 4 in my series covering the figures from Atomic Mass Games' Marvel Crisis Protocol. In this episode we'll be tackling Wong. I'm not a fan of the comic Green, but I took some inspiration from Carl Carlson's excellent MCU scheme, and I've put a link to his Insta account in the description below, so go give him a follow. As Wong's such a simple sculpt, we'll blast on through the base coats and some simple highlighting, finishing off by having some fun with the spell effect and some object source lighting. Let's get to it. I'm going to begin by painting in the eyes with some white sands, followed by a spot of black for the pupils. I'll then use Bugman's Glow for the skin and I'll be adding an equal amount of Elysian Green with a hint of black to this to neutralise some of that red and create a more Asian base tone. I'll apply this thinly over all of the skin. And a second coat may very well be needed. Here I've darkened it further with black to better define the eyes, tidying up with the original mix as I go. For the tunic I'll be using scale colours deep red mixed with violet in a roughly 2 to 1 ratio, adding a little black again. Of course use whatever paints you like, I'm just a huge fan of this range with the matte finish and the saturated nature of the colours. A second layer will be required to get that solid opaque base, tidying any areas of skin that I hit as I go. For the trousers and slippers I'll be using an equal mix of Canterbrick blue and black leather, again with a little black thrown in. You're starting to see a pattern here now right? Adding the purples into the base tones helps to deepen them and create some uniformity across the figure, particularly when considering the lighting effect I'll aim to produce later. Two thin coats as before. Finally I'll mix some goby brown and black leather equally for the gold brocade. I laid all these bases on using a size 2 series 8 brush from Rosemary Co which I find to be a versatile brush that holds a very sharp point. There's an affiliate link to it in the video description if you're interested. With that shameless plug out of the way, I'll do a spot of black lining now to better define the recesses of the figure. Doing it now means if I make any mistakes, which knowing me is a pretty safe bet, I'll easily be able to rectify them with the base colours. Now is as good a time as any to paint the base up too as I did in the Ant-Man video linked above. And when that's all done, we're ready to start adding some highlights. I'll kick off with the tunic, working up from our base by adding increasing amounts of blood red mixed with some sunset purple, followed by Aldebaran red, and finally pushing the highlights with some Teneri yellow, and apologies for the blurred images here. I'll begin laying this down broadly across the figure, leaving only the deeper shadows and recesses. blending the blood red mix into the base further as we go. This is the pure blood red sunset purple mix. I'm now adding the Aldebaran red into the mix. I'll be focusing the highlights more towards the tops of the arms and the shoulders now, as well as the extreme edges of the creases. I've also switched to a size 1 brush for better control. This is pretty much pure Aldebaran red. I'm 
I'm now going to push those highlights up further with the addition of some tenere yellow, keeping them selectively placed now and occasionally stippling them on for some more specular highlights on the material. And this is my brightest highlight. For the brocade, I'll be using Sahara yellow, Tanira yellow and white sands. As the area is so small here, we can omit the blending process and just apply ever smaller, thin layers of the individual paints to achieve the desired effect. So here you can see where I've picked out the surface with the Sahara yellow as I stupidly forgot to press record. Then coming in with the Tanira yellow towards the upper right half of each strap where my imagined light source would hit. adding a glint of white sands on the center edge of the previous step. And I'll then return to the base color and glaze an opposite low light onto the buttons for maximum contrast. Onto the skin, where again we'll work up from the base tone into Cadian flesh, then Kislev flesh, both mixed equally with the Elysian green. Finally, working some white sands in for the brightest highlights. So here I'm just mixing the mid-tone colours, then adding them to the base in a roughly 50-50 mix and keeping them nice and thin as before. I'll build a broad highlight as with the red, leaving only the most shadowed areas untouched. This is the pure Cadian Elysian mix. Building the highlight further with the addition of the Kislev and Elysian Green mix. As before, I'm now focusing these more towards the extreme features of the skin, such as the knuckles, cheekbones and nose, as well as building a reflection on the top of his head. Now using the pure Kislev and Elysium mix to focus those highlights. Finally pushing them a touch further with the addition of some white sands. For the trousers I'll begin as ever from the base and layer up using Caspian Blue, Bearing Blue and finally Arctic Blue. The main area of highlight here will be the raised knee but we're also going to build the brightness towards the spell effect to aid with the object source lighting in a while.
as always blending up through the tones, in this case the Caspian Blue, and building ever decreasing thin layers on top of the previous. Now adding the bearing blue into the mix, it won't matter if this looks a touch sketchy on the legs as our OSL glazes will smooth those transitions out. This is now the pure bearing blue. I really want to build a couple of highly reflective points low down near the spell to help really sell that effect. I'm just thinning some of the mid-tone to glaze over the brighter transitions on the knee where our spell light won't reach. Then bringing the arctic blue in to further raise those values and stippling on some texture as before. This is my brightest highlight of pure arctic blue. Let's now focus on the spell. I'm going to be quite freely playing around with these FX fluorescent colours from scale 75, but firstly I'll coat the spell in a couple of layers of pure white, being careful of the figure as I go. On my palette I've prepared some of the pink, purple and blue, as well as an equal mix of pink and purple and purple and blue in a roughly 3 to 1 ratio. Now my initial plan was to wet blend these together across the spell, so I added a drop of glaze medium to each. Once prepared I cracked on and applied the violet mix we'd mixed with the blue and purple across the entirety of the spell, then bringing in the magenta mix across the lighter extremities. This didn't work well though, as you can see, but I figured it's best to show you a mistake and how to fix it rather than just fudge the results. What did work was beginning to build the OSL on the legs using the pure purple glaze as you can see here. I'll build this over a few stages, focusing more towards the feet with each layer as well as across the base to give it that nice glowing effect. Returning to the main spell once it had dried, I decided to instead glaze and layer up my highlights, so I began with a few glazes of the violet into the shadowed areas until I was happy with the finish, allowing each to dry completely before applying the next. Then coming back in with the magenta and smoothing those transitions, I went freely back and forth like this until I built a saturation that I was happy with. Glazing the trousers when appropriate and adding in some of the magenta to them as well in the areas close to the spell and also to the base. With the spell starting to look something like what I envisaged, I came back in with some white to brighten the core of the spell and also add some reflective highlights. Then glazing some of the pure neon pink onto the smaller highlights. and building some of the orange FX on our core white highlights in a couple of stages. When that's dried, coming back to the white and brightening the centre of each of these cores. Adding a little of the orange to the speed yellow and glazing this over the orange cores. This may need a couple of coats. Finally, coating the rim of the base in matte black, and then when that's all dried, giving it a coat of ultra matte varnish.
And with that, Wong, our Sorcerer Supreme's valet, is complete, and I do hope that you've enjoyed the episode. A full list of paints used is on your screen and included in the description below, as always. I really feel that this scheme brings a lot more dynamism and interest to the figure, and I hope that you all agree. You can see more projects I'm working on that don't make it onto the screen, such as the Sanctum Santorum here in the background, over on my Facebook and Instagram accounts. I am, as ever, humbled and appreciative to you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy my content and tap that little bell button for notifications of future episodes. Have a great rest of your day, but until next time folks, bye for now.